Welcome back. We're unpacking Canada's euthanasia laws. What's going on? Is it being expanded? What do we see happening? And joining me again is Alex Schattenberg, Executive Director of the Euthanasia Prevention Coalition. Just before we went to commercial, Alex, we were discussing uh, some changes with the then Bill C-7, 2020-2021, which seemed to expand euthanasia to those with disabilities. And there was an outcry. Please continue. Right. So during that Bill C-7 debate, the disability community was right when they said that this would be a law that specifically focuses in on them. Because when you removed the terminal illness requirement from the law, which is what we did with Bill C-7 in 2021, what remained in the law was that you had to have an irremediable medical condition. Now you'd say, Alex, there was more in the law. Yes, you have to be suffering, but suffering is completely subjective. Mm -hmm. Uh, If I tell you I'm suffering, you can't tell me I'm not suffering. You're not inside my body. You don't know what I'm experiencing. Uh, the other thing is you have to be 18. Well, that is that is quite uh, clear. Uh, but then you have to have an irremediable medical condition. Uh, that's not defined in the law. So as I say, that's a type of a chronic condition that would normally mean someone who has a, a situation that's not getting better. And they could be approved then for death by poison, by lethal poison drugs. And, and they would have to have a 90-day waiting period, though. It's from these stories that we've seen the people who were in abject poverty, you know, we heard of the uh, stories like, for instance, the uh, the food bank in Mississauga. There was uh, and this woman had nothing to gain by this. She went to the uh, media saying, we have a serious problem with uh, our clients asking for medical aid and dying because they are living in abject poverty. And a lot of people with disabilities live in abject poverty because of the massive inflation we had post COVID. They went from being very poor to living in abject poverty, meaning they're saying, I have no money to live. And we saw quite a few cases like this. This is not just, oh, well, there was the one case and there you go. But the other thing is the homelessness issue. There were several people who either were fearing homelessness, meaning they they were fearing losing their homes. So they approved for, they were approved for euthanasia. They applied and were approved for it. Remember, they weren't approved based on homelessness. They were approved based on their disability. But they were asking for it based on homelessness. And now we've had wow. a whole pile of cases recently in the media of people who can't seem to get medical treatment and are being approved for euthanasia, and they're not even track two. They're track one because they're considered to have a terminal condition. Uh, Not all of them, but most of them. And it's because they can't get medical treatment, and which is the whole other thing going on. So now you're going to abandon these people by not providing them medical treatment. I'm I'm talking about treatable conditions now. I'm not talking about people who are, well, they're going to die anyway. Sorry, Alex. I'm not talking about those people. I'm talking about people with treatable conditions who can't get medical treatment with our system and are dying by euthanasia. This is becoming more and more common, and and yet this is where we're at. This is uh, really uh, a ridiculous situation, not to say that the whole issue wasn't ridiculous from the beginning. Well, I mean, just hearing you discuss what's happening practically, it's it's just, it's shocking to me, and I'm sure some of our viewers are shaking their head or wondering what's going on. And and it, it, it leads me to the question, what's the point of all this? What is the point of the euthanasia of MAID, medical assistance in dying, as it's called? Um, is this actually helping people? Well, a lot of Canadians fear a bad death. And euthanasia was sold, you know, medical aid in dying, euthanasia. Now, medical aid in dying, just, you know, was a Canadian term. And when you read about the euthanasia law in the Netherlands, they never you refer to medical aid in dying. They call it euthanasia. They call it what it is. The Dutch aren't afraid to call it what it is. We're mm-hmm. afraid to call it what it is, so we call it medical aid and dying just to make us feel better about killing, because it's killing. Uh, but, you know, w- what happened is, is that we were conditioned to believe that if we don't legalize euthanasia, that there's only one choice, and that is a bad death. And, and a lot of Canadians do fear a bad death. It's a normal human reality. Sure. Uh, the reality is, is that we're now being abandoned by our system. And so we're getting these situations. Like, for instance, there was the case last year that was just shocking, and people didn't expect this. And that was this woman who's a quadriplegic. She she became a quadriplegic when she's 17, but she's always had independent. She went to university. She got her degrees. She's always been employed. But last year she became very very sick, so she had no employment. She has she has children. So she got married. She has children, and she was in a situation where she's like, I have no money to live. So she applied for her disability benefit that she would qualify for qualify for as a person who sure. has quadriplegia. And they told her, you have eight months to wait to get your disability benefit. It takes eight months to be approved for your disability benefit. But by the way, you can have medical aid and dying in 90 days because you're not terminally ill. So she was approved for medical aid and dying. Now, she ended up not taking medical aid and dying. She actually didn't want to die. She was just like, I can't live like this, though. I have nothing. Mm. 
and they're not giving me my disability benefit because it says it takes eight months to approve me, but, uh-huh. oh, I can be dead in 90 days. This is the kind of thing you have. Uh, we well, had a case in British Well, Columbia. we'll get to your yeah, next case because just because we're right up yeah. against a commercial, but um, I'm yeah. sure, well, for me, I'm, I'm wondering then, how are, how are we helping people? How, how is this actually helping? We're going to answer those questions right when we return.